What's up guys, Max Maxfix here, and today uh, we're going to be fixing up the blazer after I broke it last weekend. So I went off-roading at Hidden Falls again and uh, had kind of an oopsie moment. Um, basically some bolts in the transmission cross member backed out, dropped the transmission and transfer case halfway out the truck, and cut some fuel lines. Um, so cue to that footage here. So... We are having a good time, rolling around, and all of a sudden I smell gas, and all of a sudden I can't really shift very well. Check this shit out. Whole bolts from the cross member just dropped out, and there's a fuel line right above it. They got cut, and just like that, this thing will actually move and drive under its own power, but it dumps fuel all over the exhaust, which is not a good idea. So the people here are nice enough to Send out a ranger to come get me, and then we can uh, tow this thing back somewhere where I can uh, have uh, AAA tow me home. So, uh, my mistake, from here on out, everything's getting thread lockered, everything's getting torqued uh, to actual bolt spec rather than like what the truck says. But this episode, we're going to take care of a bunch of uh, little things as well as fix the damage from uh, the last weekend. So let me show you kind of what I got. Um, these are brand new fuel lines. You can't actually, you cannot actually get these from GM anymore. These come from a, an aftermarket company. Um, I wanted these, they're about 120 bucks, which makes them kind of expensive. You can replace them with uh, rubber lines or you can spend the same amount of money on like Earl's fittings and tubing and stuff. I just wanted easy bolt in OEM TBI stuff. So that's what I bought. Um, to me, they're worth the cost because they're braided stainless and they're nice and uh, we should be able to replace them uh, as a direct fit. Some of the other things I learned from this weekend, we're going to temporarily install these, one at the front, one at the rear. These are kind of universal tow hooks. Um, this thing does not have recovery points at all. I had to loop through the bumper with a soft shackle. It wasn't cool. I didn't like it. Um, so we're going to fix that. And soon uh, we're going to build new bumpers in general, but for now this will be a good quickie fix. Um, we're also going to take care, like I said, a bunch of little stuff. I've got a new power steering pump. I've got some power steering fluid. I've got a power steering pump pulley puller. Um, we're going to finally do the passenger side door, fix an exhaust leak, clean up a bunch of underhood stuff. And these guys... Uh, we'll replace the spacers that I lost. I think they're actually a little bit taller, they're a little bit thicker, they're graded hardware. These come from Rough Country. Um, I probably should have bought them and replaced them from the get-go, um, but call that a lesson learned. It was like 35 bucks for those spacers, and that'll help offset our um, transfer case and get our driveline angles back to where they're supposed to be. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl under the truck, and we got to drop the whole passenger side exhaust because it's kind of in the way of the fuel lines and in the way of installing our cross member and the exhaust is designed to be pulled out as a single unit uh, if you remember back to the video where we built it that was one of my concerns um, so we're going to do that just a bunch of little things the list for this truck just keeps growing and growing um, as i take it out and learn more about it and and figure out what what works and what doesn't so i'm gonna get under the truck i'm gonna pull the exhaust off um, and then i'm gonna show you guys how we replace the lines so now we got the exhaust out and give you guys a closer look at the carnage. You can see the everything is flexed, transmission's hanging way down. Um, basically it's being held in place with this. Um, this fell out of these two holes. So we've got the exhaust kind of dropped down out of the way. I can fully remove it if I need to, but there is the uh, fuel lines. And that's the part right there where it wore through and cut off. So I'm going to let this PB Blaster do its job. We're going to get under the hood and uh, take the lines off from that direction. First thing I want to do is I want to replace these fuel lines. Um, and then putting this, all this stuff back should be just a matter of jacking it into place. So here's the damage. You can see this is the feed line has just worn right through. So we're going to save those in case we ever need them. Uh, now we can install these new guys. Um, and they only go one way. The bigger line is 
I think three eighths, that's the feed line. This one is maybe a quarter or uh, something like that. And that's the, uh, the return line. So we're gonna snake them up, install them in the throttle body, uh, and then run them down and install them under the, uh, under the truck. I got the hard lines installed. Um, I'm not gonna link them because they cost as much as the OEM ones used to before they were discontinued, but the bend quality just isn't there. I had to tweak both lines to get them to fit properly. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But truck runs, no fuel leaks. Um, so next thing we're going to do is install these guys. These are the um, transfer cage transmission spacers from Rough Country. Uh, they come with bolts, crush nuts, and uh, I'm also going to Loctite the shit out of them. So we got these spacers in. Um, they're basically just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch thicker than the stock ones. Um, so I got them loctited, torqued in, 80 foot-pounds on either side, um, which brings everything back into correct alignment. Made sure we plugged in the uh, 4x4 sensor. I'm going to get this exhaust pipe back in and then uh, hop on the other side and adjust the uh, transmission linkage because it's way out of whack again. Check out the organization of those plug wires. Check out this chrome cheese. Um, so obviously I wouldn't buy chrome spark plug wire holders, but they were in the glove box of the truck when I bought it. And so I figured might as well use it. And I kind of dig it. They, they really do a good job of holding the spark plug wires out of the way. Um, one of the next big projects that I have is I'm going to clean up this, uh, clean up this area under hood. Um, we're going to strap down this battery uh, and maybe replace this battery tray. We're going to remove this totally rusted out battery tray and clean up some of the zip tie work and the wiring and stuff here under the hood just to uh, keep everything a little cleaner. Cleaned up the air filter uh, cover is that horrible teal color. Uh, and so painted black, put it back, went ahead and cut off the snout because it had that weird flapper in it um, that wasn't really doing us any favors um, because it's supposed to pull air from down here, um, but this rubber hose is gone and they don't work very well. So went ahead and just cut that off, a little more high performance. Um, shouldn't really make too much of a difference. I checked the air filter. We've gone off-roading a couple of times in like super dusty, silty conditions and the air filter is completely spotless. So we're going to run it like this for a while. If it becomes a problem, you can always build something better. Um, but I wanted to just give it a little more sport. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the power steering pump. Um, basically it just dumps all the fluid on the ground all the time. Uh, and so we're going to remove it. Um, so the first step in that is popping this tensioner pulley, taking the belt off, um, and then we should be able to start removing it. Next step is we took off the hose from here and unbolted the line from the back. Um, there's hardly any fluid in here because it's already all spilled on my driveway. Um, so now we got to take, I think, the pulley off and then we can get to the bolts that hold this thing in place. Well, the correct way to remove a power steering pulley is with a power steering pulley puller, which I bought. Unfortunately, this pumps seen a pulley or two, and I just couldn't couldn't get it to release, couldn't even get it to budge. And since these pulleys are only about 20 bucks a piece, I figured I'd save some time. Cut it off, pry it off. Now we can remove the pump. There's I believe four bolts, three or four bolts right here. Basically hold it in place and it should pop right out. So here's our old pump. We've taken off this because we've got to keep it. Um, old pump. Let's see. There's these screwed in studs on the back of it that I'm not sure. I think we have to transfer maybe. But you can tell it's been basically just leaking from this face right here. Um, I'm going to have to cut this off so that I can you know, send it back. But this is what the new pump looks like. You can see there's a, 
a threaded piece and we're going to use to press on our new pulley um, when it comes in. But let's see. In the back, these look pretty much the same. This one just has plugs here. Um, so I'm not really sure how that works. But uh, otherwise, it looks to be identical. So there it is. Um, ready to go back in the truck. Got a cap on. We got the these two back screws on there. Not really sure what they're for, but I wasn't going to send them back to the rebuilder. They're mine. I do hope the guy who rebuilt this thing did a better job than the guy who painted it, because this paint just came off immediately. It's brand new. Rebuilt. Fucking junk. But I'm going to get this in the truck, and then we're going to go get our pulley, and then hopefully this set will be good enough to reinstall said pulley. Well, this is the old spare battery tray. You can see it's just all rusted to shit. I'm just going to throw it out. So this is our actual battery tray. It's in better condition. I basically just wire wheeled all of it. We're going to paint it black and put it back. So here's our freshly painted piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mount a plastic battery tray into here. Um, that way it'll keep acid and uh, water off of this battery tray and uh, it'll give us a place to strap the battery in. But we might have to make a few small modifications to this uh, to make it fit. So there's our mounted battery tray, our strap. Now we can go reinstall this in the truck, put the battery back in it. So here's our battery all reinstalled. You can see it's nice and secure. The trick to this is shorten this, unclip, and then basically ratchet it clipped together. And these straps work really well. I've used these Nilco brand um, battery trays in the adventure trailer and a few other projects they work really well um, so that's all bolted in this is the spot where the old one was we took it out you can see there's a big rust hole down there from battery acid or something um, but we now have quite a bit of room in this engine compartment which is good so we can put all the cool shit in there well, that's it for our little Blazer improvement video. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Check out the full Blazer playlist. Uh, check out our other playlists. If you ever have any questions about any of the work that you see done, leave me a comment down below. I always get to all of my comments and answer all the questions that I can. Love you guys. Peace.